Hey everybody, good evening and welcome to Wednesday Night Live Bible Study. I'm so excited that you're tuning in tonight. I'm Jarrell Cummings, the pastor of the Freedom Center right here in beautiful Wesley Chapel, Florida, just north of Tampa, and we're excited that you're joining us this evening. I say it all the time, but I mean it every time I say it. You have so many things going on in your lives, and I want to truly thank you for taking time out to honor God, to honor His Word, and to put Him first place in your life. I believe tonight because you have made a quality decision to put God and His Word first place in your life, that the rest of your week will be filled with blessing, peace, joy. Things will work well for you. I believe God's wisdom will flow through you. I believe doors will open for you. You say, oh, Jarrell, you're, you know, that's just hoping and a wishing. That is hoping. <laughs> Maybe you can call it wishing, but I call it faith. I have faith and hope in a good father, and he's your father as well. And because you are honoring him, Jesus said, if you honor me, I will honor you. He said, if you seek first the kingdom of God, all these other things will be added to you. He said that when we focus ourselves on him, when we delight ourselves in him, he said that he would begin to give all of us the desires of our heart. And so right now, I agree with you that because you are delighting yourself in God, yeah, you had a busy day, you had meetings, you had deadlines, you have children, dinner to get ready, practices to attend, and yet you made time. Maybe you're in your car driving, Maybe you're in the gym right now and you have me in your headphones. Maybe you're on a walk. You know what? Maybe you're not even watching live, but you're watching later. You made time to put God first. And as a result, God will honor you. So thank you. Thank you a thousand times. Thank you. Amen. Well, I'm excited about today. I'm excited about spending time with you tonight in the word of God. And I am very grateful for the goodness of God in all of our lives. You know, I want to talk to you tonight about a very important subject. And when you hear it, <clears throat> you might uh, be tempted to think, well, you know, how important really is that? But I, I can assure you that it is extremely important and extremely vital for our health, our well-being. It's, an, it's important for our lives to be successful and fruitful in every area when we understand this one subject, and that is the subject of joy. I want to talk to you about being full of joy. You know, joy and happiness are not the same thing. You say, really? What do you mean, Pastor? Well, joy is different from happiness in this regard. Happiness is based on what's happening in your life. That's where the word happiness comes from. So if things in your life are going well, if the things that are happening in your life are conducive for a smile, you know, laughter, of course, every one of us has no problem in that situation being happy. So I want you to remember this. Happiness is different from joy because happiness is based on what's happening in your life. So if good things aren't happening, then you aren't happy. If good things are happening, well, most of us, we're happy. But God wants us to go a level deeper. You say, well, pastor, what is that level? Well, I'm glad you asked. Joy. Joy is different from happiness in that joy is based solely on what you know based on God's love and goodness toward you. Joy is based on knowledge of God's love. God's goodness, God's word. When you know that God has promised you to live a successful life, that if things are not going well in your life right now, he has made the promise that he's working all things together for your good. So even though things in your life might not 
be good right now, even though good things may not be happening right now, you can go a level deeper and step into joy. Yeah, there may not be a lot of reason to be happy, but you can step into joy. Why can you be joyful even though good things may not be happening? Even though the marriage may not be going right, the finances may be acting a little funny, things in your career may not be moving as quickly as you thought, the, the, the family situation may not be perfect and ideal. You know, it doesn't look like the Instagram photo. By the way, a lot of those are fake anyway. <laughs> yeah, so good things may not be happening. But you know, based on God's word, that you're loved, you're protected, you're blessed. And God has made a commitment to make sure that in your life, Everything works together for good. And that's where God wants you and me to live. So, yes, you may be struggling right now with an addiction. You may be struggling in your marriage. Maybe it's difficult for you as a father with your children and maybe you're a single father or a single mother. I understand there may not be a whole lot of reason to be happy. But you know that God has promised you that he upholds, he strengthens, he gives wisdom for you to parent. Maybe they're looking over you on the job. You don't feel really ha uh, that happy right now with your job, with your career decision. But you can have joy knowing that God says, if you will work as unto me and not unto men, if you will focus your attention on me, do a good job, show up to work early, give your best, leave late. Have integrity, have character. And right now they may be looking over you. There may not be much reason for you to be happy, but you can go a step further because you're a Christian. You can go a step further because you have the Holy Spirit. And one of the fruit of the Holy Spirit is what? Joy. So even though there may not be a lot in your life to be happy about, because there may not be many things that are happening that seem to be good to you and me, you can step into joy and you can start rejoicing, praising and thanking God because he says that from him comes your reward. So, yeah, the boss may be overlooking you. He may not uh, be paying attention to the extra effort you're given. Maybe you were at the company the longest and somebody has come in recently and yet they have been promoted quicker than you have. And so you're tempted to give up. You're tempted to cave in and quit. Well, I say to you, child of God. The Bible says, and here's what you need to know, that work unto the Lord, work as unto him. And when you do that, he says, from the Lord, you'll receive your reward. And so because you know something, yeah, today, right now, everything might not be going the way you want. You may not be happy, but guess what? You can put a smile on your face. You can lift your hands. You can lift your head and you can say, Father, I want to thank you because I know your word says that I'm blessed and that my reward comes from you. This is what the book of James says in James chapter one. He says, my brothers, sisters, too. He says, count it all joy. Notice he didn't say happiness. He didn't say, oh, count it as, you know, happy. He said, count it as what? Joy. When do we need to be full of joy? <clears throat> Excuse me. When do we need to be full of joy? He says, when you fall into different temptations, tests and trials, you know, kind of uh, the situation with your marriage, maybe it may not be going the way you want or your career might not be going as fast as you want. Or maybe you're dealing with a teenager and you're trying to figure out what happened to you. I don't know what you are. You know, did somebody put something in your water? You know, what's what's wrong with you? You know, you were really, really good when you were 11 years old. And now you're like, <laughs> you know, are you my child anymore? You know, and you're trying to figure out well, what's going on. Well, right then and there, that's a difficult situation, right? That's that's a trial. That's a testing time with a teenager, right? But guess what? The Bible says you can count it all joy, even in difficult times. Why? He goes on to say, because we know something. <clears throat> we know something. So knowledge is based on joy. Excuse me. Let me say that the other way. Joy is based on knowledge. 
You see, if you're having a difficult time right now finding happiness, I can relate to you. I can understand that. I get that. Maybe you have a reason not to be happy. But there's something greater than happiness is what I'm trying to get you to see. And it's joy. And your joy is completely independent of what's happening in your life. Your joy is based on what Jesus has done and what God's word has promised you. And when you know that you're more than a conqueror through him who loved you, when you know that everything works together for good to them who love God and are called according to his purpose, when you know that even though in your career things might not be moving or happening as swiftly as you thought, you know the Bible says your reward is coming. The work of your hand is blessed. He's raising people up to help you. Yeah, your marriage may not be going the way it, you want it to go, or maybe you don't have a mate and you want to be married, and it seems like it's just not happening as quickly as you thought. I can understand that sometimes you might feel lonely, you might feel depressed, you might even feel sad. I can understand how that can make you not feel happy. But here's what I'm asking you to do, child of God. I'm asking you to be joyful because you know that God said that he will give you a good marriage. God promised that he would cause you to have a good husband or a good mate. God promised that he would bring good things into your life and no good thing would he withhold from you. And guess what the Bible calls a good thing? Marriage. The Bible says a man who finds a wife or a wife who gets a husband, they have found a good thing. The Bible actually says that. And then in the book of Psalms 84, it says there is no good thing that God withholds from those who are walking upright with him. And so this is what I'm telling you. When you know that, hey, Father, you know what? If it's taken a little long for me to find a mate, that's OK. You're just preparing me for the right one or you're preparing them for me. You know what, Father, I just want to thank you. You know, maybe you're dating someone and you don't really have peace about continuing in the relationship. Let it go and trust God because he has something better for you. What I want you to understand tonight is that yes, there may be things that are happening in our lives currently. And maybe it's difficult in those situations based on what's happening to be happy. I can relate. But what God is asking you to do tonight is to be joyful. And joy has nothing to do with what's happening, but it has everything to do with what has happened because Jesus loves you. And it's based on your knowledge of his love for you. So be joyful today. As you go through the rest of your week, I want you to approach your week with joy, unspeakable. What happens when we're full of joy? The Bible says our lives become full of glory, the goodness of God. I want to read a scripture to you as we close tonight. And this whole teaching is based off of this one verse of scripture. And it's in Isaiah chapter 12 and verse 3. The King James or the New Living Translation, they're both wonderful and they're both powerful. I'm going to read out of the New Living Translation and I want you to hear what God says about this subject of joy. Why are we talking about joy tonight? Why are we differentiating between joy and happiness? Why does God put such emphasis in the word on joy? Well, here's why. Listen to this. Isaiah 12, verse 3, he says, with joy, you will drink deeply from the fountain of salvation. Listen to that. With joy, not with happiness, but with joy, you will drink deeply. You'll be satisfied. You will quench the things that you are thirsty for and you'll begin to experience God's salvation. Now, for those of you who have been with us for some time, you understand that salvation doesn't just refer to when we die and go to heaven. But the Bible actually speaks of salvation 
also as our experience on the earth, living in the goodness of God. You know what God is saying? God is saying that I have salvation for you. Yes, when you die and get to heaven, I have a wonderful life laid up for you. But Jesus taught us to pray in what we call the Lord's Prayer. He taught us to pray, Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Watch this. Your kingdom come, your will be done on the earth as it is in heaven. You see, God's will is for you to enjoy heaven on earth. That's what Jesus taught us to pray. That's the will of God. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Your kingdom, what? Come. What is God's will? Your will be done. Now, where does God want his will to be done? On earth, just like it is in heaven. So what is the will of God? For you, for me, for our children, our neighbors, our family, our loved ones. His will is for us to have heaven while we're on the earth. Well, ask yourself this. Is there sickness in heaven? Well, you and I both know no. Is there disease, poverty, depression? Is there sadness in heaven? The Bible says Jesus will wipe away every tear. So there is no sadness. There is no crying. There is no regrets in heaven. Well, I think based on what Jesus prayed and based on what Jesus taught us to pray, I think that it's the will of God based on Scripture for us to experience a little bit of heaven on the earth. Am I saying life is going to be perfect? Of course not. We don't live in a dream world. But what I am saying is, if you can learn to cultivate joy, then you'll begin to drink deeply from the fountains of salvation. You know what happens when you start drinking from God's salvation with joy? If your body is in pain, all of a sudden that sickness starts to go away. It begins to dissipate. Your body starts getting healthier, stronger. You go from glory to glory, from strength to strength. And one day you look up and you think, wait a minute, I feel good. I feel great. My back doesn't hurt anymore. My knees are great. Those migraines I used to have, they're leaving. The, the arthritis in my hands, wow, I don't have that pain anymore. But what happened? You became joyful. You took your focus off of what wasn't going right. You took your focus off of what was happening and you started focus on his goodness. You started magnifying the fact that he's a healer, that he loves you, that he wishes for you to be in health above all things. And when you started focusing on that and becoming full of joy, I didn't say necessarily happy. Sure, if your back is <clears throat> you know, a disc out of joint. Hey, that's hard to be happy. You're sitting down. You, you know, I was doing a Bible study the other day and uh, one of the members of our church, I mean, you know, they can't sit that long. And I get it. It's hard to be happy. But you know what? They had a smile on their face. They didn't let that situation get in the way of them getting into the word. They continued to focus their attention on God. Someone says, well, what were they doing? They were being joyful. The conditions weren't good. There wasn't a lot to be happy about when your back is hurting, your knees are hurting, your body's in pain. Yeah, you may be dealing with some of that. I understand that there may not be a lot to be happy about right now, but you can find joy because you know that God is a healer, that he's working it together for good, that he's strengthening your body. He's giving life to you. The resurrection life of Jesus is flowing through you. And so because of what you know, you can be joyful. And once you become joyful, and you take your mind off of what isn't going right. You take your mind off of the pain and you start setting your mind on his goodness. You know what happens? You start drinking. You start satisfying the thing that you're thirsty for. Maybe it's a mate for you. Let's say it, you know, maybe health isn't your situation. Maybe your body is strong and healthy and we praise God for that. But maybe your relationships aren't healthy. You desire a mate. You desire marriage. And you don't have one yet. You don't have a mate. You don't have... Uh, a partner to enjoy life with. And, and, and sometimes, you know, it's hard to be happy in those situations. And I get that. But you know what you can do? You can take your mind off of what isn't happening right now, the things that aren't going your way right now. And you could focus on the fact that God loves you. He's good. And he promised that he would give you the good 
thing of marriage. And so because of that, you just become joyful. And you know what happens when you become joyful? You start going to the movies by yourself. You say, you know what? I may not have a mate, but I'm going to go to the movie. I want to see this movie. I'm going to go get some ice cream from Cold Stone by myself. And you start forgetting about the fact that, wait a minute, I didn't have a mate. And guess what that's going to do? All of a sudden, some good looking guy, he sees you. You're at Cold Stone enjoying ice cream. You're not sad. You're not depressed. Your head isn't dropped. Nobody wants that. Everyone stays away from that kind of stuff. People are attracted to joy. They're attracted to, 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 to glee. They're attracted to, to energy and to life. And because you're full of life and because you're full of energy, because you're full of joy, now you start enjoying or drinking from the plan that God has for you. And this guy, all of a sudden, he sees you over there and you got a smile on your face and there's nobody there except you and Jesus. You at that table eating ice cream with a smile on your face, your hair done real nice, or as they say, my hair's did real nice. And all of a sudden you just enjoying life. And this guy comes over and he says, well, hey, can I, is anybody sitting here? And you say, nobody's sitting there. And he says, well, do you mind if I sit down next to you? And all of a sudden he's attracted to you because you're joyful. Child of God, listen to me. Being full of joy is the way to life. That's what Jesus is saying. Being full of joy is the way to life. That's when you start drinking deep from the fountains of salvation. How many of you could use a good drink from God's fountain? I know I could. But you say, well, how do we do it? What's the straw that we use to drink from God's cup of salvation? You guessed it. It's joy. So I'm challenging you. There may not be a whole lot right now that you're happy about because not everything in your life may be happening the way you want it to happen. So you're no longer happy. And I'm saying go beyond what's happening and step into joy. And when you step into joy, you know, hey, God's for me. God loves me. He'll never leave me or forsake me. Yes, I know right now things may be a little rocky but smooth sailings on the way. Yeah, I know right now I'm, I'm trying to make these two ends meet every month to pay my bills and it's like I'm pulling this side and I'm pulling this side and I'm trying to make them meet. But you know, you know what? God, you promise you are supplying my needs. You promise that the window of heaven is opened over my life and your blessing is being poured out on me. You promise that your blessing is on me and my house and so I trust you that these times will not always be and you're training me in this time and I'm I'm going to be full of joy. I may not be happy, but I'm going to be joyful. Hallelujah. You know, I remember when I was uh, younger and um, I was maybe 20, maybe like 21. And um, I didn't have a lot. I, you know, I was, you know, this was 2007, the recession. I didn't have a lot, didn't have a lot of money, didn't have, you know, you hear me talk about that little apartment I was living in with the rats and the mice and the raccoon in the ceiling, the family that fell through, which the mama fell through the ceiling with all of her babies. And I was sleeping on that cot. You heard me talk about that with the broken leg and there was no cold, wa no hot water, no heat in that apartment. And we're, I'm living in New York, not Tampa. And there wasn't a lot to be happy about because there wasn't a lot of good things happening in my life. But boy, I tell you, you could ask Annie, I had joy unspeakable. I had joy because I knew that this wasn't always going to be the way life was going to be. And so what I would do is every Friday night, I'd, I'd, I would save up enough money. I'd save up $15. I was only making $8.25 an hour working a part-time job. I didn't have anything but I would save up just a little bit of money. And every week I'd use my faith to save up this much money to go to Sal's Pizzeria and I'd buy a, I, I couldn't start out with a pepperoni pizza cause that was an extra dollar 25 for the toppings. But I started off with a cheese pizza and every Friday night I'd go and get me a pizza from Sal's Pizzeria, a cheese pizza. And I'd sit down and I'd watch the Knicks and I'd eat that pizza on a milk crate. That, that was my table. I had two milk crates and I would eat that pizza there and I was full of joy and I would thank God for his goodness because I knew that the way things were today, God promised that if I stuck with him, that if I honored him, that if I sought him with all my heart, 
He promised he would reward, he would bless, he would elevate my life. And I knew that where I was today wasn't going to be where I was going to be tomorrow. And so I started being full of joy. I didn't have a whole lot to be happy about because there wasn't a lot happening in my life. But I had a whole lot to be joyful about. And I started to practice what I'm telling you tonight. I started to become full of joy. And guess what happened? I started drinking from God's fountain of salvation. And guess what, guess what I use as my straw? You got it. Joy. And I'm begging you tonight. I can understand you say, Pastor, I, I'm just, I'm not happy right now. I don't have a mate. My, my marriage is falling apart. My children are, you know, they're crazy. I don't have any, you know, my career isn't going well. I'm not happy. My heart goes out to you. I can understand. But you can be joyful. And the Holy Spirit is with you, empowering you. He's convicting you and convincing you that there is more coming. That what you see right now is not always how it's going to be. That there is a light at the end of the tunnel and that light isn't a train. It's the brightness of day. And it's a new day on the horizon for you. Please, please don't quit. Be full of joy. Drink deep of God's goodness with a heart of joy. And watch every situation in your life that is currently making you unhappy because of what is happening start changing as you become joyful. You're in control, child of God, not the devil. You're in control, child of God, not your emotions. You are in control, child of God, not your circumstances. Let's be full of joy. Let's trust God. Let's stick with him. Let's drink deep from the cup, the fountain of salvation. And watch your life and your situation and your circumstances begin to change by the blessing of the Lord. Amen. I love all of you so, so very much. Hey, listen, I have a real quick announcement to make that I want to get out to all of you. We are in a new church location this Sunday. We have a brand new place where we're going to be meeting. And when you see it, it's going to be awesome. We're going to be meeting at Wiregrass Elementary starting this Sunday. And that's going to be our new church home. You know, we have a lot of kids coming to our church now and we needed to find a place where our kids can have activity, fun and still be safe. And that's what an elementary school affords us. And so we have a beautiful cafeteria space we're using. No more lockers surrounding us. We have beautiful bathrooms. No more stalls for all of the people who had to endure that. We get to have a great time in a wonderful facility with really good AC. So I'm encouraging you. Stay on after this live stream at 745. Immediately following this, we're going to have a real quick walkthrough that my media guy, Rob, put together for you. And it's going to show you how to get into Wiregrass Elementary, where you need to be parking, and then how to find your way through the school to the cafeteria where our Sunday services are going to be held this Sunday at 10 a.m. So I encourage you to listen to, to, to that video. Watch it as soon as we're done. And you're going to be extremely blessed. And I want you to come out this Sunday to church, 10 a.m. at the elementary school, Wiregrass Elementary. Bring a friend, bring a family member, bring a colleague, pick somebody up off the street. I don't care what you do. Bring people to church and let them hear of the goodness of God. I love you. And he loves you. We're praying for you. And remember, keep drinking with joy from the fountain of salvation. And your situation is bound to change. I love you so much. Have a great day. I'll see you Sunday at 10 a.m. Bye-bye.